Hi everybody, my name's Jason. I'm Kid. I'm Jaden. I'm Mila. And we are the Yahoo and the Tour channel. And we thank you guys very, very much for being a part of our little uh, table here in the middle of the jungle. With, uh, yeah, it's a little round table. It's, uh, what, what would you guys say? It's a two and a half feet table. I can reach over, mm. I can touch anybody at this table. It's, it's really small. I think it's more than, I think the farthest point, the farthest point is a little more than two. It's a little, it's a small little table out in the middle of the house. It's not exactly a small house, but we are out in the middle of the jungle, isolated from the rest of the world out there and we hear that everybody out there is uh putting on little elf ears and red hats and we, we haven't seen it we haven't seen this yet because we haven't gone out oh mr cole's actually on measure this table it's three feet it's three a three feet. foot table all right well thanks mr cole yeah so <clears throat> yeah so the rest of the world they are um putting on their little uh, reindeer antlers and uh getting ready to bow down to their knees to nimrod's phallus and it's just about that time and this was the time every year that my mother would lie to us. And actually, she didn't lie. Actually, my mother was, was lesser of a liar than most of the people because she always said it was a Christmas angel is who came and gave us presents. And so it wasn't really Santa. She, she, she spun this to the Christianity thing and said it's a Christian angel. So um, every year I was looking forward to the, the Christmas angel. Um, and on Christmas Eve, this is when we all got on our knees to Nimrod's phallus. And all opened our gifts, and we this was this was the big deal. And then the the Christmas angel would come uh, at night, stuff our socks, our stockings, full of all sorts of trash that my mom did that uh, definitely made me gain lots of weight. This is bad stuff. This is stuff you shouldn't have kids eating. This is why these little kids, all the little kids, are all fat everywhere. Is because we've eaten like all this candy and we just stuff it. So. Everything about it is a mess. And so here we are, and we are those people that don't uh, celebrate any of that. And so hopefully you guys are those people as well that don't celebrate any of that foo-foo madness. Uh, it's all satanic. It's all garbage. Um, and like Brother Todd Bennett said, if you were actually – if you were a good pagan and you were keeping the Equinox days, you're, you should have celebrated Christmas like three days ago. But if you're, if you're just a bad pagan, then you're just going to be celebrating on the 25th. And so um, I guess – uh, that's what we have. All right. <clears throat> so, anybody have any jokes or anything? Uh, what do you call a fly without wings? What do you call a fly without wings? A raisin? A walk. A walk. Oh. Well, I mean, it looks like a... <laughs> it does kind of look like a little raisin, doesn't it? We call it... In fact, the, the dogs eat flies all the time. We call them sky raisins. And they, they, they literally love eating flies. And they will sit there and snap at the windows. They like eating bees. They love eating all this stuff. Um, all right, I don't know if I should do this joke or not. I don't know. Why, why do ducks have feathers? I heard you say that. Did you hear this? Have you, heard I, the, you guys heard this? I heard this. No, why, I didn't. You didn't? Well, so why do ducks have feathers? I have no idea. <laughs> to cover their butt quacks. Oh. <laughs> we didn't know if we should run this joke, if it was like too bad or something of the sort, but there you go. That's that's the worst joke you're ever going to hear from us is that, so that's why ducks have feathers. All right, everybody. Um, can you give us, Jade, a little bit of what is happening in... Uh, judges, where we are at right now. What is what is a, a recap of this? Okay, so Joshua died. Uh, the children of Judah said they were going to go up and take, conquer the lands. They said they went to uh, Shimon and said, "Hey, can you, we'll go into your land if you go into our land, and we'll uh, I'll conquer together." Well, they they did conquer a little bit, then they uh, failed. They didn't conquer everything. Most of the tribes didn't conquer. They left people alive. They made covenants with them, and some of them didn't even get their land. Some of them were driven away when they were trying to conquer. So they have all not completely conquered land. They are living with other people, and some of them are getting enslaved. Yeah, and so all around them, um, who are some? Who are some heroes that we have in scriptures that we are just heroes? We have Moshe, Moshe is a hero, right? Joshua, Phineas, Joshua. Um, would we call yeah Caleb definitely a hero? Would we call Aaron a hero? Yeah. I mean, he did good things. The calf, the golden calf. I mean, besides that, okay. Uh, is he? But is he? Is he a hero? I think his kid's a hero, Phineas, right? Um, today we're going to learn about three different heroes. Three heroes long after the days of Joshua, and. Um, you know, this is the thing is, is all of us can be these kind of heroes. All of these guys, the, the problem that these guys have is disobedience. The problem that we all have today is disobedience. We are disobedient to our creator. We do not obey the laws, statutes, and commandments that are found in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. We definitely, we, we, we fail. And so the majority of the world does not care what the, what the creator says. And this is what we're going to find out is all of our forefathers and foremothers failed ridiculously, like lots and lots of failure. 
All right, before we get into this, guys, this is going, this is a, uh, still books are still available, $64, 103 books, large print. It is a very, very good buy. Guys, we're talking to the prisoners all the time. We're writing the prisoners. Eli, how many prisoners will we do? Seven emails yeah. yesterday. We had seven emails back to the prisoners out there um, from our week, basically our, our week's uh, consortium. And they're the prisoners are super awesome. They're very, very nice guys. Um, they've done very, very tremendously bad things. I mean, I would have to say that these guys are all my friends. And now all my friends are people that shoot people in the back five times. Um, which I didn't have those kind of friends to begin with until I started hanging out with these guys. And these are the guys who, um, they're telling us their stories. They're telling us their life. They're telling us their darkness. And we've gotten in, I don't know how many scriptures, a tremendous amount of scriptures we've gotten to these guys. And all these guys are extremely thankful. They're extremely, they're very, very nice for the place that they are in. And yes, we're only seeing part of it. But these guys need hope and they need our creator. And so this is where we are. These this $64 that essentially costs us around 32 bucks to print one of these these scriptures from India to our doorstop in the United States is, is about 32 bucks. Jade's over there coughing, hacking, wheezing, something. Um, excuse us here. Um, and so at $32, there's no profits or anything that go to anywhere other than it goes into another Bible. And this Bible, where the free Bibles go into the prisons. And so this is what we are trying to do. And we will not be able to do this without you guys. This is going to be a, a group effort of everybody who is a Torah keeper who's willing to help us build this. This It's not even a business. It is a, is a free Bible printing press. And for every $64 that goes in, if somebody donates $64 into this, we can get two scriptures out immediately. We can get two scriptures into the prisons. And this is where um, we hope that people will have big hearts and people will see the, the value in ministering to these guys. Um, and then if you don't have the, the money to purchase, the, it doesn't matter because these scriptures are all 100% free. Um, the exact same scriptures that are in the books, we have wrapped up, Miss Nicole has wrapped up, and this is revision five of Yah's scriptures. It is the same version that will be in the books. It has been proofread over and over and over. It has been built with love. It has been built with very much care. And so we are very, very happy with this final revision. And you guys can download all of the eSword uh, as available uh, at some point, hopefully soon. The Google app will be available and um, you won't need eSword on the on the Android for it. But there's, it's available right now. All, all of it is is there. And so if you guys would like a, to download it, we're getting... I, at this point, we have over 10,000 downloads, and um, we're, we have hundreds and hundreds of downloads every single month. And so this is a good thing that, that people are interested in the word of Yah, and they are just kind of going for his word. Go. Here we are. And let us get into this. Anyone have anything before we're ready to go? Uh, no, I don't think so. Kate, are you okay, Lee? I'm good. Okay. Just checking. You look rough. Mornings. So there's a couple morning. I don't think there's any morning people at this table. Eli is definitely... Who's the least of the morning people? Eli. Eli, you? Jade, you think you are? The least of the morning people? You don't come... What are you talking about? What do you look... I mean least. What you mean? Least of the morning people. Do you know what a morning person is? Yeah, okay, okay. I thought you meant... What is like, a morning I person? I thought you meant like, like the bad in the mornings. Because we're... I'm like least worse in the morning. Yeah, you're... you're the, you, you wake up the best. You you wake up better and more coherent than Eli, who stumbles out like he's been uh, shot uh, shot up a little bit. He's like a uh, kind of a zombie. Ah. <laughs> Every day, he'll say he's been up for like a week straight. <laughs> but then Kay comes out, and he has been up for a week straight, and he looks at that bad, too. That's crazy, huh? Well, I'm <laughs> better than Eli. <laughs> <laughs> this is this house. Well, at least I'm better than Eli. Well, that's us. But, hey, hey we, we love each other, I think. Everybody loves each other, right? Let's put this on record. Yeah. Yeah, Everyone loves each other? There's no there's no animosity here? No. Nope. Brotherly love is 100%. Always. We don't. We, we, we forgive our brothers 70 times 7. We work on that. We work on that. We're working. It's a work in progress, okay. right, guys? <laughs> so we're, we'll, we'll try. We'll get back to you on that one. Yeah, we'll get back to you. We'll, we're trying. We'll try it harder this week. Okay, here we go. Three. And these are the nations which Yahuwah left to try Yisrael by them, all those who had not known all the battles of Canaan, only that the generations of the children of Yisrael might know to teach them battle, only those who before did not know them. All right, just a second. I got a like a hundred pound dog on my foot. Thank you. All right, better. Okay, I find that very interesting, right? That Yahuwah left some of these dudes, some of these bad nations around 
And the reason why is to teach them battle. That's that's amazing, right? I mean, is that that's that's the love and the the care of our Creator, that he 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 has people planned out. I mean, everything in our life is planned out by our Creator, right? It may seem like everything is completely chaotic, but there are things that are around us that have been put around us for things like this, right? We don't know how many times our creator has taught us battle, right? Has taught us something in our life or has put something before us that we did not realize. Some, what we think is a stumbling block where we only um, stumble right into something that it was far less than what we were. And so I, I just find this very interesting that our creator left these guys there. Did you have something, Jade? Yeah, would the previous generations not teach them how to battle? Well, they didn't teach them Torah, so I don't know. Maybe they didn't teach them battle. I, don't know. I, I, I feel like they would like have like an army, like a like you know, like a general. Like you think they'd have an army of priests? That this, you, you would think that every single person in Israel, after seeing all of their family and everyone be saved over and over and over, that they would understand the basics of the Torah. But it appears they don't. Yeah, and I guess, so uh, if they don't teach the Torah, I guess they probably don't teach them how to yeah, fight. Yeah, if, but if Daddy didn't teach you the Torah, he ain't going to teach you how to fight. Every parent teaches their children how to fight. They should absolutely. I believe that, um, especially females. If if I ever had a female, I would have had her in jujitsu. I would have had her in jujitsu at two. She'd be snapping arm bars on people at five. It would be amazing, you know. And that's what that. Unfortunately, we live in a world where a the women are unfortunately dominated um, by the men, but. We're getting into the United States where it seems like the chicks have now turned into dudes. So maybe that statement is all completely wrong. I don't know. There might be more testosterone in the females than there are in the males in the United States these days. Okay, let's continue on. Um, <clears throat> so he's leaving this starting at the end of two. Only those who before did not know them. Five princes of the Pelishites and all the Canaanites and the Sidonians and the Kiwites who dwelt in Mount Lebanon from Mount Baal, Kerman, to the entrance of Kamath. And they were to try Yisrael by them to know whether they would obey the commands of Yahuwah, which he had commanded their fathers by the hand of Moshe. Thus, the children of Yisrael dwelt in the midst of the Canaanites, the, the Hittites, the Kittites, and the Amorites, and the Pezrezites, and the Kiwites, and the Yebusites, and took their daughters to be their wives, and gave their daughters to their sons, and they served their mighty ones. So that's completely breaking what the commands it has that don't make covenants you know, don't intermingle yeah, how many commands did we just break here i don't know uh, they didn't kill them yeah they, they didn't uh well, they disobeyed cleanse the land yeah they didn't dis they disobeyed yah's command because we don't actually have a command ourselves to go kill other people right 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 but uh um, they, they they specifically had a certain command for right. themselves and uh, then they intermingled with them they serve their mighty ones so i mean there's there's a there's like probably at least five sins of the world Serving their mighty ones to play for and, and you stuff. know they, they did not teach their kids the Torah, right? We have a commandment, um, even from Deuteronomy six, that everybody shouldn't understand who Yah is about His ways. They moved on. They moved away from the the leader who saved them, and it's it's just it's really crazy to read this stuff. But this is the beginning of great uh, distress. Okay, seven. Thus, the children of Israel did evil in the eyes of Yahuwah and forgot Yahuwah their Elohim and served Baals and the Asheroths. And the displeasure of Yahuwah burned against Israel, and he sold them into the hand of the Cush, Cushan Rishin Athenium, sovereign of Aram Naharium. And the children of Israel served Cushan Rishia Atherium eight years. <clears throat> and the children of Israel cried out to Yahuwah. Yahuwah raised up a savior for the children of Israel who saved them, Othniel, son of Kenaz. Caleb's younger brother. So we got the hero out of the family line, right out of Caleb's world. So at least, you know, maybe Caleb's family is... Uh, is this the that married his daughter? Yeah. Pretty sure. So uh, now he's about to go rock and roll. And the Ruach of Yahuwah came upon him, and he ruled Yisrael and went out to battle. And Yahuwah gave into his hand Cushim Rish Atheum, sovereign of Aram Naharim. And his hand prevailed over Cushim Rish Atherium. And I hope we never talk about him again. And the land had rest for 40 years. Then Othniel, son of Kenaz, died, and the children of Israel again did evil in the eyes of Yahuwah. And Yahuwah made Eglon, sovereign of Moab, strong against Israel, because they had done evil in the eyes of Yahuwah. And he gathered to himself the children of Ammon and Amalek, and went and smote Israel, and they took possession of ur Tamarim. And the children of Israel served Eglon, sovereign of Moab, 18 years. That's a long year, right? The first one was eight years, right? Yeah. And this one's 18 years. So we have, what, 26 years that these guys were in captivity. And when the children of Israel cried out to Yahuwah, Yahuwah raised up a savior for them. Ehud, son of Gera, a Benjaminite, a left-handed man. And by him, the children of Israel sent a present to Eglon, sovereign of Moab, 
Oh, a left-handed man. What's wrong with this guy? Oh, wait. Kate, you're a lefty. How you doing, buddy? Wait, wait, there's there's three righties and there is a lefty. Um, is there is there any difference between the right hand and left hand? I think that we think differently. Yeah, they de Kate definitely thinks he thinks like an artist and things. I think he's he's more uh, brainy when it comes to like drawing things and, and graphics and things like that. The right-handed people, um, I don't know too much more difference than that. There is some different definitely differences between right hands and left hands. But anyway, this dude's a left-hander. Okay, let's, let's see what he's doing. Let's see what kind of prison they sent to uh, Egalon. Okay, and Ehud made himself a sword. It was a double-edged and an ama in length, and he girded it under his long robe on his right thigh. And he brought the present to Eglon, sovereign of Moab. Now Eglon was a very fat man. <laughs> and it came to be that when he had finished bringing near the present, he sent away the people bringing the, bearing the present. I think this is the only time that we ever hear about someone's weight or how large they were. Wait, wait, wait. We had somebody else. Uh, who was it in, later on that killed the really fat guy? This is him. Nobody else. Is this? Is, I don't suspect. think so. Didn't we have somebody else? I don't think so. Nobody else. Yeah, this one gets. This is, this is, hey, don't. you blew it. You blew it, Mr. Cole. You gave us spoiler alert. Yeah, she. Yeah, she's in the corner breaking our spoiler alerts here. Um, yeah, I don't remember. Are we sure? Fat. I thought there was another dude, another instance. The of only this. person we've ever, I don't think, like about like their appearance like this was like the kiss was really short. The kiss was short, and that, you know that's that's a, that's an interesting thing you make because. Um, you know, there's all of these people that are, uh, I guess what you would call racist, that that uh, believe that skin color has anything to do with salvation. And um, right. yeah, this would be like saying that like fat people don't inherit the kingdom, right? That's this, It's the same thing. You have these, um, what, what we call the angry black Hebrews, and they are the guys that come on YouTube. And I guess they stand around in cities or something dressed up as uh, Levites, and they're very, very angry. I had one come on the other day. Uh, and tell me, I, he was going off and saying that I am uh, I, I basically suck because of my people or something. And I'm like, my people? I'm like, my brother? What, what, who are you talking about, my people? My people are everybody. It doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter if you have a hair. You're my people, right? Your furry, furry animals are my people. Everyone's my people. And there's nowhere in scriptures anywhere that has a thing to do with skin color. But yet you will have these guys that will tell you, oh, it's only, the, it's only us angry black Hebrews that are going to be in this kingdom to come. Because the Bible is very, very clear that we can be very angry and that we can hate our neighbor and we can yell at them and we're all good. We're going to be safe. Which for anyone who doesn't know, that is absolutely not true. That is contrary to scriptures. Um, I, I just had to rephrase that because there's people out there that would probably think that. Oh, yeah, well, that's probably right. right? Good enough. Oh, well, there we go. But no, there's no thing about there's no thing about race. There's no thing about gender. There's no thing about like skinny, fat, all that, anything. Uh, it's just it's it's all if you are willing to obey the laws, statutes, and commandments of our Creator, He will be our Elohim. And that's it. That's the bottom line, right? It doesn't matter what color. It doesn't matter if you're blue or yellow or whatever. You're still part of the kingdom if you are willing to obey our Creator. Okay. Um, okay, let's where's the present with, with egg, egg lawn, egg dog? We're on 19. <laughs> okay, 19. But He Himself turned back from the stone images that were at Gilgal and said, I have a secret message for you, O Sovereign. And he said, be silent. And all those standing beside him went out from him. And Ehud came to him while he was sitting in his cool roof room. And Ehud said, I have a message from Elohim to you. So he arose from his seat. And Ehud reached with his left hand and took the sword from his right thigh and thrust it into his stomach. And the handle went in after the blade and the fat closed over the blade. For he did not draw the sword out of his stomach. And it came out behind now, most people out there don't have a lot of sword experience. We, we Boss Clan has a tremendous amount of, we have a lot of sword experience. So most days, I would say most days, at some point, we pick up a sword and we start uh, playing pirates. No, uh, we pick up a sword and start cutting grass. Um, and, and cutting grass or cutting, you know, something out there. This is the jungles. And so um, how sharp of a sword would this have to be to be able to move on through? Mm, well, I think both sides are sharp. I'm thinking this isn't like uh, like like something we have like one side. I think it's probably both sides, and it has to be long enough to go all the way through, but not too long. Do you think stabbing a human or stabbing a cow would be harder to break the skin? Uh, a cow. cow. I think a cow. I'm going for a cow. Yeah, exactly. Like though. They got Hard like that leather. I mean, that's like like that skin, man. They, that, they got a little bit of fur, but that that skin of theirs is, is crazy. Okay, let's take it there. We used to have to inject the cows. 
right? When you had to inject the cows with whatever it was, I mean, you had to do a stab with your stuff, right? It wasn't, it was yeah. an easy poke or did you s slam that needle in there? Um, yeah, you have put a lot of pressure like on what, it. What kind of shot it was. Right, so explain a shot. If, to break the skin, was it easy or hard? Uh, you had to put some pressure, like if it was just like, if it's intermuscular, you gotta like put some force into that. You cut yourself. Is it easier to cut yourself or is it easier to cut the cow? Probably myself. Yeah, I don't think human skin is anywhere near what a cow skin. I mean, they can rob against a barbed wire all day long and like not into a cut, but if you like get touch a barbed wire, you're pretty much bleeding. Now, over. this guy just got a uh, sword jab through him. If it, it was probably what? What are we taking? If this guy had this this knife on his leg, what are we talking? Probably like a two foot. Oh, it says thigh. It says no right thigh. thigh. Right, right. Little thigh. He was an log. So. And I'm gonna just like a cubit, and that's like 18 inches. 18 inches. 18 inches. That's a decent sword. <clears throat> yeah, so 18 inches. So that dude is at least. Uh, I mean, he's a foot and a half large through there that the sword goes uh, in there. I'd say bigger than that. And it went out the back. It did go out the back. That's very interesting. So he must not hit any bones or anything when he did this. It was just like a straight on through. Now, why don't you suppose this big fella starts screaming when this dude jabbed him with a sword? I don't Because I don't, we know our cows well, scream. Well, read on. Okay. Yeah, and you'll find out. What does it say? I read on this morning. I didn't see. He didn't say why this guy wasn't screaming. He was walling around in there. He was like, in pain. yeah, but he just screamed. We we've um, we've, maybe we've killed the cows. The cows scream. They scream very very loud. Anybody who's getting jabbed with a, a some sort of device is you're not going to sit there and take it like oh well let's uh, that that hurt right. It's something a little different. Okay, so why didn't this guy scream? It doesn't tell us this, but anyway. Um, I would say because he's in shock. Maybe maybe he's trying to figure out the whole situation. Maybe he was surprised by it and it took him a second, and then it's like too late. He like had no more power to scream anymore. What if he jabbed the sword in there and then covered his mouth up and then wouldn't let him scream and just let him sit there and die? Maybe no, because he like immediately gets out of there. All right, let's continue on. Let's see. All right, here we go. Uh, and the handle went in after the blade, and the fat closed over the blade, for he did not draw the sword out of the stomach, and it came out. Of, it came out behind. Then Ehud went out to the porch and shut the doors of the upper room behind him and locked them. And when he had gone out, his servants came to look and saw the doors of the roof room were locked. So they said, he is only covering his feet in the cool roof room. And they waited until they were ashamed, until they were ashamed, but saw he was not opening the doors of the upper room. So they took the key and opened them and saw their master fallen to the ground, dead. But while they were delayed, Ehud escaped and had passed beyond the stone images and escaped to Syria. And it came to be, when he arrived, that he blew the ram's horns in the mountains of Ephraim, and the children of Israel went down with him from the mountains, with him leading them. And he said to them, Follow me, for Yahuwah has given your enemies, the Moabites, into your hand. And they went down after him, and took the fords of the Ardeen, leading to Moab, and did not allow anyone to pass over. And they smote about ten thousand men of Moab at that time, all robust and brave men, and not a man escaped. And on that day, Moab was humbled under the hand of Yisrael. And the land had rest for 80 years. And after him was Shemagar, son of Anath. And he smote 600 men of the Pelashites with an ox goad. And he too saved Israel. Yeah, there's another story about this guy where he's sitting there like like saying stuff. And the guards thought he was just like, oh, he's just role playing. He's just playing. In the, he's just See, like, I think there was another time. I, it wasn't there? Wasn't there that story? Was there I thought there that? was another time. I, I don't think it was this dude that did this. I think there was another time. We're going to have to look no, this up. It was, it was, I know it was this guy because they like, had to open the door. They unlocked the door to make sure like he was all right. He was sitting there like playing around for the longest time. But no, he's, he's dead. I think he was rolling around in pain. No, no. He opened, they opened the door. He was dead. He dead. After, yeah, because they let him sit there and like die. Yeah. He's a, Okay. It does not take very long to bleed out. That's the bottom line. You're only going to take two or three minutes tops to be uh, where you're not going to be able to do anything. And it's going to be a very, um, it's going to be a very sticky, wet uh, experience. My guess is still this dude jumped on, put his hand over this dude's mouth and stopped him from the initial screaming, which would have alerted all of the people in that place is my guess. I'm only guessing. I don't know. What do I know? I'm just some dude in the middle of a jungle. So anyway, that's it. Um, anyone else have anything on this? We're going to have to uh, get more astute and study. I guess we can read this thing over and over and over and over and over and still be uh, not have all the stories right. So we'll look this up. We'll see the other fat guys in the Bible and bring this up tomorrow and see if we are out of our minds or not. But with that, everybody, we hope that you guys have a wonderful day. We thank you guys very, very much for being part of this. We hope that we don't gross you out. We hope that we don't upset you or we're just chilling, chatting, just just uh, thinking about these stories as they happen. So thank you guys very, very much. We hope you have a good day. All right. All right. Shalom. Shalom.